we are live. Welcome to my review and thoughts of the 2003-2005 Clone Wars show. Not THE Clone Wars, but Clone Wars. I feel like it might have been a good idea for them to title these things more different things. Anyway, I'm going to start by telling you this was... I really, really loved this series of shorts. Uh, there will be some jokes and... I'm not going to get into very many serious topics in this video. Now, if you are looking for a review that talks about, oh, uh, you know, doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by later stuff, because of that it's no not as much fun to watch today, and or, you know, it has issues with, like, canon, so it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. And, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I started this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Now, uh, let's see. Please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in the Star Wars franchise, so everything up to and including Attack of the Clones. As soon as I end the review itself, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, um, as far as rating goes, let's see, the, um, oh, that was the other Clone Wars. There we go. Yeah, um, 12 plus, and that makes a lot of sense, and so will, I'm, I'm not going to say anything in this video that would be inappropriate for someone younger Yes, younger than 12 and up. Yeah, there we go. I uh, got there eventually. So, uh, most of what I say in this is going to be my opinion. So, if you disagree, that's perfectly fine. And, yeah, so I have watched uh, each of the shorts once. And I just got done watching the very last one right before hitting record so plot wise you know I, I try to start my videos with a brief plot just a your bare bones there's not a huge amount of plot here so um yeah this chronicles various battles during the clone wars and let's see um, the, yeah, that brings us to the writing, so, let's see, the, um, yeah, um, okay, so Brian Andrews and Paul Rudish wrote the story for one episode each, and then, yeah, Derek Bachman and Jendi Tartakovsky are also... Also, opponent only wrote story for one episode. Yeah, I think this is a weird thing with the credits. Anyway, Derek Bachman and Jen D. Tartakovsky wrote all 25 shorts. Now, uh, yeah, like the second and third prequel movies, there's some conflict between Obi-Wan and Anakin, Palpatine and the Jedi Order. You know, the, the romance is... Yes, yes, I'm spoiling Attack of the Clones and onwards. The, the romance between Padme and Anakin has to be kept secret. Occasionally, you will get just the quick exposition set up in context before a battle. Certainly, you can always tell who is winning in fights in this. And, you know, so, yeah. The first thing, a problem in, in some of this, as it is in Revenge of the Sith. But, yeah, one of my biggest problems with Revenge of the Sith, as far as action goes, is... Who's winning? Like, I can't tell. I, I can't make out there's too it's too much medium shots and and such you know so the primary function of this series of shorts was to build and sustain hype between the release of attack of the clones and that of revenge of the sith you know the so yeah once again these were released between 2003 and 2005 attack of the clones came out in 2002 revenge of the sith came out in 2005 so this yeah uh, there is not a huge amount of plot 
unfortunately does not quite appear to be canon. There are a couple of things that, that happen in this that kind of contradict the canon of the prequel movies. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, apparently also later it's been, I'm, I, I feel like, did they, did the Legends thing affect the, yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah, so some critic quotes, female Senator Amidala Beris Ofi Luminara Unduli team up with Master Yoda to bring gender balance to the force. While poor writing is probably the most expected fault of the microseries, it is still the most disappointing. At the very least, one should expect continuity with the films, yet the Jedi exhibit powers far beyond that what they had displayed on the silver screen and let's see uh yeah this lent itself to fun sequences of jedi tearing through legions of droids but it again undermined the notion that this was star wars canon see yeah i it didn't bother me hugely it was it was way too much fun to watch and you know ultimately this is fairly insubstantial uh it's it's very much junk food and I, I don't have, all I ask for from my junk food is that it's made well. I don't really expect it to, you know, the, the, for the canon, as far as force powers to, to be, yeah. So this, all, all 25 episodes were directed by Jenty Tartakovsky. Now he has 36 producer credits, 36 writer credits. 27 directorial credits and he is still working today the most recent thing is from like last year might still be running um yeah and i'm really glad because he's so freaking talented this is it would really be a shame if he wasn't still um let's see so so yeah uh oh he did three they made three hotel transylvania movies that's at least three too many. Um, I have no right to say that. I haven't watched any of them. I just don't like Adam Sandler. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, other than this, he is very well known. You know, the things he's perhaps most well known for are Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack. Right. He did also work on Powerpuff Girls. Now, I have to say this is the only thing by him that I've watched, even though I did spend a lot of my childhood watching Cartoon Network. Uh, I don't know. Uh, just, it wasn't... The, the, yeah, uh, those couple of things that he did were not what was on when I was watching. Now, each of the 25 shorts will turn in some way. There will be something that you didn't see coming. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate that. It... Otherwise, it would eventually kind of become white noise, but no, there's always something that you didn't quite expect to, yeah. Uh, General Grievous is introduced in this, and he stepped right out of a horror movie. He is chilling, intense, creepy, seemingly unstoppable. Like, I get why people were disappointed when they watched Revenge of the Sith and were like, that's grief. He was so cooler. He was so much cooler on Cartoon Network than, you know, but, but yeah, um... Yeah, you know, if you watch Revenge of the Sith and you're like, ah, Grievous, watch this again. You know, it really is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and there, there is an assassination plot uh, underway. I'm not going to say who is involved, but yeah, that was quite cool. There are a few ongoing plot threads. Not every single short will necessarily continue one of them, but gradually they build to a crescendo. The, the ending of this is epic. Honestly, the whole the whole thing is, is really epic. So, some critic quotes. Tartakovsky is a real talent with a distinctive style. There may be a handful of other animators working in mainstream animation today that could make the same claim, but they all deal strictly in comedy. Tartakovsky has proven he can do comedy with Dexter's Laboratory, but he is capable of drama too. Clone Wars is a family drama, but it is still a drama, and Tartakovsky shows he has real skill even while being constrained by... Constrained by the fairly strict Star Wars universe. And, yeah, the, the combination of Gen D's unique style, character design, and some of the best animation in years makes for a wonderful eclectic mix of color and movement. The action scenes are very exhilarating and well-paced, but of course, since every episode is over in a flash, you never really get to immerse yourself in the story. It's mostly like watching trailers for something much larger. Let's see. Um, 
But having said that, I saw the first five episodes in sequence after having taped them from Cartoon Network, and that was a much better, more coherent experience. Now, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the... the um, yeah, as a mini feature, Clone Wars isn't compelling all the way through. The battles get repetitive and a little excessive. If every Jedi can mow down an army with a gesture and a spinning backflip, why did they get their brown robe butts so thoroughly kicked in the last film? And why can't the bad guys build a single droid or ship that doesn't explode upon the briefest contact with an enemy? But Tartakovsky's simple, clean designs and sterling fight choreography are as compelling as ever. While they were advertised as five minutes, they averaged less than three and a half. After each premiere was an exciting and excruciatingly short, around three seconds preview of the following chapter, here was the real hook luring fans with the hope that the feel of the clip could be maintained for the chapter's duration. So, yeah, I can't speak to that. I did not watch them, uh, you know, I watched the, the, the let's see, what, what, what do they call them? The volumes. You know, I, I watched this, yeah, as, as two, uh, let's see. Uh Huh, okay. Uh yeah, they're they're called volumes on the um when you go to Disney Plus. You, you know, if you really want to, you can you can tell where one short ends and another begins, but yeah. Uh yeah, the the opening is great. This really grabs you from right away and uh yeah, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before, and yeah, some of the best stuff of this is in the ending, and it really, like, don't watch this if you don't also have access to Revenge of the Sith. Like, if, if you, or, or, you know, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the prequels, so I don't feel a huge urge to, re you know, I remember it, I remember Revenge of the Sith well enough, but... You know, if you watch this and you haven't watched Revenge of the Sith, you're really going to want to watch Revenge of the Sith right after. Um, but, but yeah, you know, right now they are, you know, all... Ah, uh, let's see. There's three trilogies, that makes nine, and then there's two old... Uh, yeah, uh, all 11 Star Wars movies and the, the, you know, various shows are on Disney+. Plus, So you can transition directly from watching this to watching Revenge of the Sith, although... For some reason, instead, after I was done watching this, it suggested, like, The Clone Wars, which I am getting to, don't worry. I mean, for sure, there is... I, I, can, I can understand why, but I really feel like the ending of this, like, okay, Revenge of the Sith, bring it on. And that brings us to... Uh, right, yeah, uh, this is definitely... Don't try to watch this if you haven't watched, um, yeah, yeah, at least Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. If you haven't watched those and you sit down and you try to watch this, you are not going to have a single solitary clue what's going on because it really is not made for, you know, this This is made for, for I don't want to say kids, but yeah, kids, uh, who watched the prequels and were like, more, please, you know, so, yeah. And that brings us to the characters. Uh, yeah, so, Matt Lucas plays Anakin Skywalker, and one critic said, I get that the character is supposed to sound like a whiny little Padawan, but instead he just comes off sounding like a teenage Donald Trump. Oh, that's sadly true, yeah. At, and once I heard that, I could not unhear it, but, yeah, um... And let's see, right, and this is one of those where they will play multiple roles, so James Arnold Taylor plays Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I am probably going to butcher this, uh, Agent Kolar, and Tom Kane plays Yoda, Frank Ryan Marquez plays young Anakin Skywalker, Terrence T.C. Carson plays Mace Windu and Ceci Tin. Uh, all right, T.C. Carson, cool. I'm glad he's still acting, uh, or was at this time, at least. Uh, Anthony Daniels plays C-3PO, and one critic pointed out, even he sounds off, and it's the original actor, and, 
you know, yeah, some of them come close, but nobody else quite sounds like the movie character. Um, yeah. And Corey Burton plays Sand Hill and Count Dooku. Great Delisle. Very cool to, you know, I've, I've been hearing about her. Um, and I think I have, I've, uh, I believe she's done some video game voice work as well. But, yeah, you know, finally I get to, to hear her in a, an animated show. She plays Asajj Ventress and Padme Amidala. Now, I realize that she was in the films as well, but I did not think it was necessary for them to sexualize her. You know, they put her in tight clothing. They have, you know, like, revealing cleavage. They're trying to focus on her being a badass in her own right. Like, she kicks ass in this show. I, I do not think it was necessary to, to do the, the clothing. Like, they didn't do that very much in Phantom Menace. Um, but, yeah, you know, this is set after Attack of the Clones. Maybe the, you know, whoever came up with all these designs figured, oh, I guess she's just always hot now. Um, but that, you know, part of that movie was Anakin falling for her. So, you know, that's part of why they had her dress like that. Anyway... Uh, she also plays Shakti and Stas Ali. Uh, Nick Jameson plays Palpatine slash Darth Sidious. Ah, yeah, he's one of the only ones who only plays one role, and yet two. Andre Sogliozzo plays Commander Cody, Captain Typho, Captain Fordo, and all of the clone troopers. Richard McGonagall plays General Reeves and Kit Fisto. Fred Tassasiore, very cool. As Qui Gon Jinn, Apo Rancisis, Darren Norris, as Kiadi Mundi, Dirge, Master Beric, Evan Piel, Cree Summer, as Luminara Unduli, Tachana Yasukovic, as Barry Zofi, and Kevin Michael Richardson, as uh, Kruk, I guess, as I would pronounce that. Yeah. Um, this does not further their characters like huge, the, the ones that are also in the movies. It does, I thought it was coolest when it focused on characters not in the movies. Um, you know, since if it's not gonna further their characters particularly, you know, I don't, I don't care that much if it's Anakin, Obi-Wan, and, and those, but, you know, it does feature some really cool other Jedi, you know, some, some very memorable alien designs and such and the moment that it's other jedi it's like i mean they might actually you know they might perish during this you know we, we know that's not going to happen to the the main characters there's a third movie coming out you know when there was when this was being shown um they they can do something really interesting you know they're not constrained but you know at the end of the day like well, one example would be they, you know, the the main characters tend to speak Galactic Basic, uh, so that they don't have to subtitle so much. And certainly, they, I don't think there's there are any subtitles in this at all. Um, but yeah, there are a couple of alien characters who do not speak Galactic Basic, and you kind of have to infer what is being said. It's it's not like difficult to follow or anything, but yeah, that was that was really really fun and and cool to to have these completely different, uh, yeah. You know that's the thing. Like, the moment you have animation, like if you're gonna if you're gonna do convincing CG in a live action movie with CG, you really have to make sure everything. You know, but if every character is animated, you might as well. You know, there's it's not that much easier to animate a human being than you know a, a weird alien. Some of them are easier to animate. Let's see. And this does fight back against the, the notion that women are too difficult to animate. Now, the... Yeah, dialogue. There's not a huge amount of dialogue uh, in this. There's so little that despite reaching feature length, this doesn't have any entries in IMDb's memorable quote section. Honestly, I think... I There, there are a couple I might add, personally. I, th I thought there's some really memorable... There were a couple of really cool lines in this. Um, there is sometimes a lot of communication between troops, but it will be, like, non-verbal communicate, like, you know, the, the, like, like, hand signals, like, you know, on me, you two, I am, I watch you, so don't, you know, yeah. <clears throat> 
Or, as the critical drinker would put it, they have no real way to communicate meaningfully. Why do people still listen to... Anyway, in general, this has really solid visual communication. Like, I was... I had so much easier of a time of being able to follow, you know, what's going on in the action scene in this than in Re Revenge of the Sith. So, uh, yeah, the cinematography is quite good. Keeps the camera moving nicely. Great use of, of color and, like, lighting and shadow. And so just, yeah, there, there are a couple of scenes where you can barely make out what you're looking at. It's just pitch black and just, like, s gradually you'll see something start to creep into just super cool. Um, yeah. And the editing... Uh, yeah, it's always interesting with editing for a an animated... But yeah, this one does have... Apparently, it was handled by Paul Douglas, who has 32 editorial department credits and 43 credits as editor. And let's see... Yeah, seems like he's still... He, he worked recently as, as well. And it looks like they worked on some of the, you know, he worked with Tartakovsky on some of the other things as well. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know, the editing does a really, really excellent job. There is a lot of fast-moving stuff in this. And, and, yeah, like, you know, three and a half minutes short, like, you really got to make sure that the audience can quickly get a sense of the, of the, the, uh, what's it called? Ah. Uh, make, make sense of what's going on, you know. <laughs> yeah, the spend, at an average short of this is, you know, th three and a half minutes. That's about as much time as is devoted to exposition to get, the audience up to date. I, f I feel like certainly that bit in Matrix Reloaded, I think that went on for like three and a half minutes of Jim, Jim, bleh, them talking and, you know, also some showing, but yeah, in this, the, yeah. So the animation is quite good. Uh, there is some cost cutting, but they cost cut, yeah, they cut costs in the right places. Like the level of detail, movement, the background can be pretty static, but it's not like, it's not the, the stuff that, Ah, yeah, it's it's not, it doesn't look bad from cost cutting. Um, yeah, I won't critic put it, like most of the Tartakovsky series, like Dexter's Laboratory, the character designs are sparse, economic or iconic, if you want to use euphemisms, and I do, I think they are quite iconic, it, it's, yeah, but, but yeah, for sure, like, you look at, like, for example, the, the troopers, you know, there's, there's very little detail and and yeah now the yeah uh there are some really cool exotic locations around the star wars galaxy including ones we haven't seen before just yeah let's see and yeah the the villains are really really cool and Right, so the music is handled by Paul Dinletier and James L. Venable. Now, let's see, it's not really stuff that I... Right, yeah, uh, um, Paul also worked on Samurai Jack. Oh, the uh, video game, Samurai Jack. Um, let's see. And... So Venable has does you know a number of other animated, but also oh, the uh, what's it called Jay and Silent Bob reboot. But yeah, um, they do they do really well with the the music. There's a lot of like tense and and you know it's yeah things are going really fast kind of thing action. Um, yeah, there's some really great sound design. There are a couple of aliens in this that, you know, yeah, are not in any of the movies. And, yeah, they really have to make sure that they have a, a sound to them 
that makes sense and and kind of stands out so that it you know if if everything is animated then anything that doesn't that isn't made distinct just kind of you know yeah it's it's all animated anyway kind of thing you know like if you're watching live action and you see someone with like makeup or animated or something it's like oh okay that's there's something different there you you pay special attention to that now uh the comedy is similar to the yeah especially phantom menace attack of the clones Rose of the sith and return of the jedi um yeah let's see the um yeah so uh pacing i chose to watch like 10 minutes per day i think yeah there were a couple of days where i watched um yeah i guess i did end up watching 30 minutes today i i was gonna watch 15 minutes today then the last 15 minutes tomorrow and do the video but i felt like doing the video now um i think trying to watch this whole thing whole things in a single sitting or two sittings you know there are two volumes on disney plus would probably be exhausting unless your age is still in single digits uh let's see yeah there, there's more action than dialogue and other like quiet stuff and let's see that is Right, uh, the length is 2 hours and 12 minutes long without end credits, 2 hours and 14 minutes long with them, and yeah, honestly, this will probably either grab you pretty much right away, or it just isn't your kind of thing. You'll you'll be able to tell, like, I don't know, I guess give it maybe 15 minutes, and yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the best element of this is just plain fun visual like creative action uh the worst aspect is that it is insubstantial i really don't think that's a big deal you know it's like if you watch the whole thing all of the shorts it comes to about the same length as one of the movies you know like i would have a problem if this was like a way longer series but yeah uh, yeah, some people don't like the animation, you know, to, to each their own. I, I would definitely say, you know, if you don't like the animation, again, you'll be able to tell really quickly. If you don't like the animation, yeah, then you're probably not going to like watching this. Uh, that would definitely be my guess. Um, because the animation is really the main, you know, there, there aren't that many. It's, it's not one of those animated shows where, like, okay, you know, we got people hooked already, so... Now we're just going to have the characters move fairly slowly, not very much, and just talk for a while. That does not happen very much here, so if you don't like the animation, it's not going to be for you. So the thing I was most worried about was that it would, you know, legitimately appeal only to children, and I was not a big fan of the comedy in this, but other than that, like, the, the action was legitimately really, really exciting and engaging. Uh, thing I was most looking forward to was some animated Jedi action, and yeah, um, that's very much, you know, uh, not all of it is, is Jedi. Some of it is just, like, the wars, you know, armies against each other and, and large weapons uh, and such. But, but yeah, if you really love the whole thing with, um, uh, what's, uh, the, the Clone Wars, the, the prequel setting of, of time... And this stuff of, like, Jedis and, you know, this the, the kind of battles that we also see in uh, Attack of the Clones and, and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, this is very much for you. Uh, the cover and poster do not give too much away. Uh, let's see. And on Rotten Tomatoes... The, okay, so yeah, um, yeah, it's divided into three seasons. Season one has an 80% uh, critic score based on five ratings, 87% audience score based on 164 ratings. The second season does not have any critic ratings, 
but the audience score is 90% with 110 user ratings. And the third is 89% audience uh, based on 103 user ratings. And again, no critic rating. And on the, yes, on, on Met, yeah, on Metacritic, there are, yeah, there's only four reviews and three of them are in English, but 22 ratings, 9.2 is the overalls. Yeah, uh, the three English reviews are all nines. And I think this, I think the last one is Spanish and it is a 10 out of 10. So, yeah. And on uh, IMDb, there are 88 user reviews, uh, 70 of them without spoilers. So, yeah, I just read them all. Normally, I read the top voted 100, but yeah. And yeah, those 88, uh, there were three of them that give one out of ten, two, uh, let's see, yeah, two, two, two out of ten. Zero, three out of ten, one, four out of ten, four, five out of ten, three, six out of ten, seven, seven out of ten, sixteen, eight out of ten, twenty-two, nine out of ten, and eleven, ten out of ten. So yeah, that this was fairly positively received, you, you might say. Uh, let's see, it was uh, it won four awards, three nominations. I guess nominations are ones they were nominated for but didn't win. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation. Primetime Emmy. Um, let's see. And Outstanding Animated Program for Programming One Hour or More. Also won. Uh, nominated for a Saturn for Best Television Presentation. It won Best Animated Television Production for Episodes Chapters 21 through 25. Uh, let's see, and the, um, it was nominated for an Annie for Best Animated Television Production, and a Gold Derby, uh, TV Award Animated Series. So, the, um, let's see, yeah, and that brings us to, um, So this is a children's show, basically, you know, so they don't push the violence further than they can, but they push it as far as they at all can without, you know, getting a, an age rating that they did not want. Um, so humans aren't cut and lose limbs, but droids are, and instead of blood, it's sparks, and there's also a number of aliens where, you know, yeah, it's not red blood, but there's some really gross, gnarly stuff when they're, you know, when, yeah, when they get cut and, and such. And this at times gets gross. Sometimes people making children's entertainment forget that a lot of kids like gross stuff in their media. This is not one of them. This is appropriately gross. Like, you know, if you haven't watched in a while, there's some, yeah, it's, yeah, I quite appreciated uh, that. Now, let's see, that brings us to the rating so yeah i gotta say i i rate this nine cartoon network star wars stories out of ten uh yeah i have almost no problems with it and that brings us to the thoughts section now there's only going to be one this time uh the notes yeah uh hold on that's right i gotta write the Time code. Here we go. Notes taken while watching. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, there's a lot I really love about this. So, um, most of this is going to be in chronological order. The underwater short with the Jedi and underwater lightsaber and droids and vehicles underwater. The, the joust droids. Um, Gonna have to call them because I have no idea what they're actually called. Who actually stopped the, the the clone troopers at first? The gladiatorial battles, Dooku versus uh, Ventress, I think is is what she's. Yeah. Um, let's see, Obi versus the Jouster, and then again when it's armorless, turns out to be an alien, regenerates. Just so so cool. 
Anakin versus Swarm, and then just one ship, and let's see, yeah, we, you know, we see that it's the, it's, it's Ventress luring Anakin away, and Obi-Wan sees through it, and, you know, Anakin falls for it, because he is, you know, he has, he struggles to control his, his, yeah, his anger, when, yeah. Um, and Mace Windu battling droids with the clone troopers, then the big ship, droids on his own, destroys the large ship, and gets a drink from a kid, which, yeah. And, let's see, yeah, uh, um, the female Jedi builds her saber, and then she and Luminara fight droids that set explosive, including using the explosives on them, just so cool, and Yoda fights the droids from the outside, now, one thing I did not uh, love, so Padme uses C-3PO as a decoy, like, in in Phantom Menace, she was the she was the one person who went to help Jar Jar when he was stuck to the pod racer, like, she tends to try to help those who need help, and here she's seen taking advantage of someone, like, and, and it's not like he's fine with it, he's clearly scared, you know, at, yeah. Personally, I would have preferred that Padme ask R2 to throw something into the air that the evil droids could then attack. This feels like a mild character assassination to me. Uh, let's see. And, and Yoda comes out with the two female Jedi. R2 finds transmission, one of the droids, which reveals who is behind this. Dooku, says Yoda. Language. Let's see. And... But, but yeah, I really appreciate she got to be cool. You know, she got to help out in in the fight. You know, they're not, she doesn't have Jedi powers or, or a lightsaber or anything, but, you know, or, or, you know, armor or training or, you know, but she still fights as much as she can. I, I really love that about her character. In general, big fan of the, the female characters in these... Uh, although Ray obviously should have gone to, gotten to do a lot more, but it's not the actress's fault. Uh, let's see. And she does get to do some really cool stuff. So, let's see. So, yeah, Anakin lands. Turns out Obi-Wan sent a bunch of clone troopers to help him, but they're all taken out by Ventress using the Force. That was really cool. I really love how she can apparently, like, turn invisible. Like, I get how that might not work, and that might not play as well in live action, but I thought that was super cool, you know. With Dooku, she also changed her appearance completely, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, uh, she isolates Anakin, you know, for she, she isolated him ge geographically by flying away, luring him away, and then she kills all the clone troopers to, to isolate him as far as the force goes. And, you know, only after isolating him do they fight. Very smart of her. He does win, but he also takes a step towards the dark side. There's a Wolfman Jedi that's so cool. I I can't help but wonder. They, I bet they sold a lot of toys if they... Be, yeah. Uh, and General Grievous gets an epic intro and build-up just demolishing Jedi. Like, I 100% understand... Why people had high expectations for him now. I, I remember hearing that back in 2005. But, you know, I didn't know anything about this. I, I hadn't watched the show. So, I, th I think I might have heard that it existed. Let's see. And uh, really love the, the group of clones that drew a mouth and eyes on their transport ship. And where the blue troops have really big guns. Just ridiculously... See, they manage to rescue the surviving Jedi. The wounded ones are put on IV drips of Mountain Dew. You know, it really does show Grievous as a serious threat. Uh, the Jedi Council discuss if Anakin should be a knight or a day, noting that he is a cunning linguist. Very cool new aliens, both the Jedi Council and walking the streets with Anakin. And, yeah, Anakin does become a knight, which suggests this isn't quite canon, so just, yeah... Maybe that's why he's so angry in in Revenge of the Sith when they're like, you know, uh, you can you can be on the council. What we we do not recognize you as a Jedi Knight and he's like, "Did you not watch the cartoon?" And Anakin eats bugs. Presumably he met Timon and Pumbaa on recon. That's, you know, yeah, like 
that was very very gross and there's like one really long slimy one that it just yeah that was you know and and obi-wan is like i can't believe you're eating that let's see and yeah a little bit of wookie action love the sparring between dooku and grievous and and Anakin takes down the huge creature and meets some Navi. And an attack on the city, you know, like Coruscant, I'm pretty sure. Badass Windu flying, shooting, jumping from his vehicle onto a droid when taking control. Like, I think he, like, uses the lightsaber to cut open the, the upper part. And then he reaches down, grabs the, the um, what's it called? The, the wires and like takes control of it using the force which makes me wonder if he's like a scanner because that's you know you know the the moving on uh let's see i love the jetpack clones and the jedis they attack a ship in space so this is where the jetpack clones came from because i you know i love playing the um now i actually it's been a long time since I played the the very first Star Wars Battlefront. The the I want to say two thousand three. Uh, you know, I've I've been playing something I've been I've played much more recently was the two thousand five uh, Star Wars Battlefront two. Um, so I forget if there are jetpack troopers in the first one, but certainly there are in the second one. And you know, when I you know every so often I'll play it and I'll be like, where did they come? Like, because are there any? In, I, I don't, cer certainly not, like, I guess it would have, you know, it's been too long since I watched, but I, I don't offhand remember there being ones, flying ones in the, you know, like, Django flies, but I don't remember clone troopers themselves flying, but, yeah, in this they do, so, yeah. Let's see. And and Yoda creates this makeshift asteroid field using telekinesis and droids, and then the you know planes fly into the, the just yeah, and one of the troopers is maybe the one they call Fordo pulls a Rambo just badass, and what starts as a teacup moving slightly culminates in Grievous attack like that was so cool you know what is that noise you and it just stops him see no big deal and she comes in through the window and just. Yeah, let's see, and yeah, the entire fight between, the, you know, the roaring snail Jedi with four throats, and love the moving cave paintings, and the fight in the subway using trains as weapons, barriers, and even transportation, who'd have thunk? That might have been my favorite, of if I had to pick one that I thought was just the coolest the fight in the subway with them, like, jumping out of the way of oncoming trains. And at one point, one of the Jedi pick up one of the, the others and throw him in front of a train. Just, yeah. And Anakin sneaking around the droid facility gives me serious Oni vibes, which is why it's up there. And the, the, release the specimens, but they are not ready. Just, yeah. Um, that's a classic. Love it. Um, and I got a real fortress vibe from the, the movie, the, uh, the, um, what's his name again? Ah, uh, okay, that is not, I refuse to let that stand. I, Lambert, Christopher Lambert, uh, movie. Uh, let's see, and, you know, I, I like the thing with, uh, you know, one of, one of the clones is like, what about the left flank? The Jedi have the left flank. <laughs> yeah, they can, yeah, they can handle it. I loved seeing the red eyes in the dark, just so cool. And Anakin frees the the specimens from the mind control. And that one Jedi loses her saber and she like uses one of the one of the I guess they are also droids, right? The the ones with the spinny staffs with with a uh, little bit of purple pink something like that at the end that they can like deflect lightsabers, you know, and she gets one of those staffs and uses and I think she got her, eventually got her lightsaber back. Yeah. And Anakin versus the core, losing his robot arm. That was intense. That was, wow. You know, just... Ah, ah, you know, 
crushing the, the crystal and just, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, and, and I love that he could still use that, he can still do telekinesis with the, the, ro you know, broken robot hand. You know, like, the entire hand is basically gone. It's, it's a, yeah. I mean, it would not be a piece of Star Wars media if not at some point someone got, like, a hand chopped off or something. Let's see. And so cool when, like, Grievous is up against two Jedi and, like, you know, they, they you know, so, so it seems like, oh, okay, I mean, I guess that's kind of even because... He has two lightsabers, and they have a lightsaber each. But then he, like, reaches down and gets out the last, you know, lightsabers three and four. That was really, really cool. Let's see. And, yeah, you know, the ending very, very much leads directly into the start of Revenge of the Sith. Which I'm not going to be spoiling here, don't worry. But, yeah. <laughs> That was really I, I can I can understand why I have to wonder if maybe part of because because like it got pretty well received for or maybe people were just, just I remember I talked to a, a fellow Star Wars fan at the time and he was like yeah I don't think it's better than the first two I think we're just at this point like oh I guess it's not gonna get any better huh but I can't help but wonder if uh, some of the positive reception was from people who watched this and were like oh. Wow, so so Palpatine has been captured and Grievous is incredible and all this stuff and just yeah. Um that is it. So the um yeah. Uh hit me up in the comments, let me know. What did you think was the very best part of, of this? Like, uh, maybe mention your favorite of the shorts or your favorite character who's in this, but that we don't see in the in the movies. Uh, favorite bit of, of tech or planet or, you know, what, whatever that just... Yeah, if I, had to, if I had to choose a setting, it would be the underwater. That was so cool. Uh, and I'm not usually super into, like, un underwater stuff. I, I get the appeal, but it's not usually my cup of tea. But, yeah. Um, yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. Like, it is a droid, and, you know, hitting it will help win the war. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the new Willow show, which is this time the finale, in fact. And recently, the Reviewing Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as, as, well as catch my movie next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.